Perfect. So when we talk about uh, Basilica and Shortcut and there are other tools also in progress, we talk about uh, methods to prevent a devastating complication of TAVI procedures. And this is the coronary obstruction. Coronary obstruction is a very a bad complication that we need to identify patients at risk for, and we need to prevent it in all costs. It's associated obviously with the high mortality rate. We know how to identify patients at risk for coronary obstruction. There are many uh, different classifications, but basically we always need to identify what would be the residual flow to the coronaries, how the anatomy will look like after we deflect the leaflet. And that leaflet could be the native leaflet, it could be a degenerated surgical valve, it could be a degenerated TAVI valve when we do TAVI in TAVI. And we'll talk about it. The most common method worldwide to prevent coronary obstruction is called chimney or snorkel technique. It is the method that utilizes a stent to, def def to push the leaflet a bit out of the coronary ostium or for, to enable uh, the STJ flow towards the sinus to pre uh, prevent the sinus sequestration. And uh, there are many uh, old descriptions on how to do uh, it effectively, the stent protection method. This is not a complex method to do, but uh, that method is not uh, uh, optimal because it is not uh, designed to prevent coronary obstruction by implanting stents. Stents are designed to treat atherosclerosis. And uh, there are many uh, potential challenges related to the durability of that technique. And uh, we all uh, can understand what can happen also when you try to bring these stents back and you are jailed and are not, you are not able to bring them. So it is clear that we need to orient ourselves, this is what we understood, towards the origin of the problem. And the origin of the problem is the deflected leaflet. We deflect leaflets in TAVI procedures, the original native uh, leaflet in a uh, native TAVI or in valve in valve, it's a bioprosthetic leaflet. So we need to modify that leaflet in a way that it will prevent coronary obstruction. And we understood over time that a single leaflet tear can prevent coronary obstruction. If we are able to make a slice in a leaflet, that leaflet when deflected will not cause coronary obstruction in the same magnitude that it may have caused without deflecting it. And you can see here a couple of examples of what happens to a leaflet that has a tear when you deflect it. It displays and enables flow through the uh, split between the parts of the leaflet. <laughs> this, this is a picture from uh, the first inhuman basilica procedure that uh, I was fortunate to perform in uh, July 17. It was uh, now six years ago and, uh, in Seattle. We didn't know about uh, the potential risks of uh, splitting aortic valve leaflets. We were guided by a team in the NIH that uh, already has done some lampoon procedures with splitting of mitral leaflets. And as you can see, the table is filled with a lot of equipment. Some of these things are not uh, necessary maybe anymore. And we still did the protection to the left system with the guide and the stent, like the chimney technique, because we didn't know whether we are, will be successful or not. And here is a small cartoon of how Basilica is performed. Basically, we need to stand behind the leaflet that may cause coronary obstruction. In the LVOT, we open a snare. We electrify a wire and deliver it through the leaflet that we intend to tear. And later on, we electrify that wire again 
and pull both catheters back. And after that leaflet is uh, uh, cut, we are able to perform TAVI and hopefully we will not have coronary obstruction. So the method of how to do basilica is described in many different uh, publications and you can read it. I can say clearly that the most important step in how to do basilica procedure is the leaflet traversal or step number four in the slide that you see here. You need to stand behind the leaflet in a correct fashion in order to traverse it with the leaflet. A minor uh, inaccuracy in that positioning will lead to inability to cross it. So with the, the introduction of leaflet modification in TAVI procedures, basilica and other techniques, we need to introduce new nomenclature. Now it's clear to all of us that we need to talk about a single leaflet and not uh, only on a perimeter of a valve area, a coronary height. We need to talk about the leaflets and how to view these leaflets in how to, what are the projections <laughs> that may orient the leaflets well in front view and side view. You can look at it in our different publications. But basically, we know that this is the perpendicularity plane of the aortic valve that goes along from areocaudal to aleocranial. In different places along that perpendicularity plane, we are oriented to the different leaflets in, in an important fashion that it needs to be understood for the basilica technique. For instance, when we want to slice the left cusp, in aleocranial, there is a view in which we are isolating the left cusp, the left side view. In areocaudal, we are isolate, we are a, in frontal view of the left cusp. So obviously, in the areocaudal view, we need to be in the center of the valve. In aleocranial, we need to be oriented with an attack angle towards the leaflet that we want to slice. This is basically, in short, the importance of pro different projections in the basilica technique. We also need to appreciate coronary eccentricity. We know now that some of the coronary ostia do not come in a, a, a oriented towards the center of the leaflet. They are a bit uh, towards the side of it. And well, when the, we have these conditions, we need to consider doing also an eccentric cut and not uh, cutting the center of the leaflet. And obviously the efficacy of doing basilica in these conditions when they are extreme is not as good. This is another argument to do good commissural alignment of TAVI devices in order to enable future leaflet modification that would be successful. So there were basilic, many basilica procedures performed for failed TAVI devices. And I must say there were, was originally a concern that it may not work, but it does work well also for failed TAVI devices. Here is an example of a patient with a failed the Evolute, a failed Corval device that needed a double basilica procedure. And the, uh, I can say that double basilica procedures are complex. They require a lot of catheters sitting in the aortic root because you cannot slice one leaflet and then work on the other. You need to be prepared uh, before you start slicing leaflets. So you have here four catheters sitting in the aortic root. In the right side of the screen, you see the left cast laceration and on the left side, the right cusp laceration, and later on, implantation of a sepient ring inside that failed, uh, failed core valve with a good coronary flow, and that patient did very well later on. The basilica is not uh, shy of adverse events, and uh, since it was applied already, already to many hundreds of procedures, we see many examples of things that can happen. But well, obviously, uh, traversal adverse events are uh, maybe the most common ones. Traversing the wire in, or not able, being able to traverse the wire 
in a, a abnormal fashion, like to be around the ring of the surgical valve to cause a fistula or to uh, penetrate the aortic mitral curtain. Here you can see examples of mitral apparatus loop or injury to other places of the heart that can happen. Obviously, these are rare events. Most basilica procedures are uh, not associated with adverse events. And the, the most common thing that we hear from different centers is inability to traverse the leaflet and the inability to perform the procedure rather than having an adverse event. Uh, the majority of uh, basilica procedures, uh, uh, especially at the beginning, were performed with the uh, neural protection devices. Here is a, a piece of a mitral flow leaflet that we gathered from a sentinel device in a case in uh, Germany that uh, I came to Proctor. It's quite interesting how uh, these things can happen. Maybe we need to have neural protection in many of these cases. Here is an example of a devastating adverse event that happened also a uh, aortic dissection. And again, these are extremely, extremely rare uh, things that were encountered. Coronary obstruction can still happen after a leaflet uh, modification. And uh, it seems that we can reduce that risk dramatically, but it's not zero. And this is an Allegra device that still had coronary obstruction after Basilica and needed a stent. And uh, we can say that now, six years after the introduction of Basilica, we still do not see many centers performing Basilica independently. Also, many big centers, centers that do a lot of TAVI procedures, are still not independent in that. And uh, it is clearly related to the off-label uh, utilization of a uh, wire electrification, and uh, the challenge of uh, traversing leaflets uh, that I described before. So there are several devices that are, that are dedicated for splitting or, uh, aortic valve leaflets. The most uh, uh, known is the Picardia shortcut device. And I'll show you a short cartoon describing it. This is a device that uh, goes uh, transfemorally through regular 16 French sheath. You can go through a smaller one as well. You unsheath the device. And here it comes. It has a positioning arm and a splitting element. The beginning, and this is uh, intended for left cusp laceration, the device is delivered behind the cusp that we want to split. So we bring it behind that cusp. There are several knobs that are utilized for that. You are able to rotate the device also. And when you are in the correct position, you deliver a splitting element from the LVOT that punctures the leaflet that you want to split. And later on, by a gentle push on the wire, the left ventricular wire, and gentle pull on the catheter, you're able to split that leaflet. This is after doing numerous of shortcut procedures, I can say that this is a very, very quick and easy procedure to do that uh, may solve the challenges of the Basilica technique. So these are... Uh, different uh, uh, valves that we tested with a shortcut. And this is an animal uh, evaluation, uh, porcine evaluation of a uh, splitting of right and left cusps, native cusps. So we described in uh, uh, recently, less than a year ago, the first eight cases performed with shortcut. Nowadays, there are more than 50 uh, procedures that were performed. And uh, I can say that we are very pleased with the results of the shortcut device, also in very old and sick patients. You can see that some of these patients, patient number two was 96, and uh, some of these cases were quite extreme. None of these patients uh, 
uh, died or had stroke or had coronary obstruction. Uh, you can see the clinical characteristics of these patients. We also treated the failed TAVI devices that I will describe. These are the vivid classification uh, characteristics of these cases. The majority of them were uh, cases at risk for left uh, coronary obstruction. Some of them were combined left and right. Five cases were left, we are right. The average procedure time was uh, 19 minutes of the shortcut procedure. And there is a study ongoing now in uh, Europe and in the US uh, evaluating 60 patients having shortcut device. That study is about to finish and I may say that we are uh, quite pleased with the results until now. Until now, there are multiple de de degenerated valves that were treated with shortcut, including failed evolute, sepin 3 and sepin XT. I'll show you several examples. You can see a case that is clearly at risk for uh, right and left uh, coronary obstruction. The uh, anatomy is quite uh, severe. Unsheathing of the device, landing the device behind the left cusp. We activate the splitting element and we split the leaflet. You can see it on the right side of the screen. After that, right cast laceration, which is performed only by rotating a knob on the device in the or behind the right cast. And then you lacerate the right. You wish it the device, with, you withdraw it and you quickly deliver the TAVI device. It is surprising, but almost all of these patients having leaflet modification do not have hemodynamic instability. It seems that leaflet tears by themselves are uh, uh, tolerated well when you do TAVI after a couple of minutes. Here's an example of shortcut that was performed for a uh, failed uh, SEPIN-3. And here is an example of a shortcut that was performed for a failed SAPIN XT that was associated with the risk for coronary obstruction. And here is maybe a, a, a more complex case, a failed uh, evolute. We know that uh, uh, some of these supraannular devices, especially when implanted high, could be associated with high risk of coronary obstruction. You can see that the uh, these patients uh, uh, could be complex to treat. You can see on the left side how the lef left cusp uh, leaflet, if we push it, it may close the flow to the left main. And the same thing on the right side of the screen with the right uh, coronary. This is a shortcut procedure that was uh, very successful. Splitting uh, the right cusp and afterwards rotating the knob and splitting the left cusp. And this is the end result, good flow towards the coronaries, no issues. The patient did very well later on. Just before I finish, I'll describe two novel things that could be associated with these uh, devices as well. This is an example of a shortcut that was applied to modify the anterior mitral leaflet transapically before a tendine procedure, TMVR procedure, that was performed as well. This is intended to prevent LVOT obstruction. That was a very successful procedure. Another utilization of leaflet modification can be to uh, modify bicuspid valves by slicing pararafe in order to improve the expansion of the TAVI device later on. Or we call it aortic root tricuspidization. Here is an example from one of these procedures with a basilica technique. 
no shortcut was applied yet to these uh, anatomies. You can see the laceration. And later on, good expansion of the valve that was implanted. You can see also laceration, the basilica technique of a, a type zero bicuspid valve. So I'd like to summarize that coronary obstruction is a life-threatening complication of target procedures. Basilica splits aortic cusps that may otherwise cause coronary obstruction. It has been applied to many hundreds of patients with rare major adverse events that I described. With the expansion of TAVI into younger populations and as multiple valve interventions may be required for patients with AS, there is a real need for a dedicated leaflet splitting device and shortcut is one of them. It allows for controlled and simple splitting of single or double leaflets with short procedural times, only a couple of minutes. Effective leaflet splitting was successfully performed without coronary obstruction stroke or vascular complication, and shortcut pivotal study is currently enrolling in, in Europe and the US. Leaflet modification may also be advantageous in selected cases of bicuspid or heavily calcified uh, aortic valves unrelated to the risk of coronary obstruction. So I'd like to thank you again for inviting me and happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you for your excellent lecture.